All right, so I'm uh, very excited about the uh, experience track this year, and uh, uh, we want to kind of kick this off. Now, before uh, we, we jump into this, I wanted to kind of do a little setup of the way we were kind of thinking about this. So uh, we all are uh, interested within this industry as far as um, the experience, which is kind of like the grist for what we do. Now, this year what we wanted to do is just find some individuals that had uh, points of view on things. So rather than doing, like, doing kind of like a case study, we actually wanted to, to pose a question and during their uh, time up here, look at it from different angles and basically leave you with a point of view of whether you agree with it or you don't. It's completely up to you, but the, hopefully it inspires conversation. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. And I am very excited about our very first speaker. Uh, he's actually the founder of Five Wits, which was a, uh, it's an adventure, real-time adventure stores, I think is the way he's, we call it. So, uh, yeah, they've been around for about 14 years now, or 12 years, my apologies. And uh, just a great guy, and very excited about this. Please put your hands together for Matthew Duplessy. Thanks, Corey. Thanks for that overly generous introduction. All right, here we go. First speaker at... at when I realized that I had been assigned the first slot, the first feeling is, uh-oh, you know, I, I no context, boy, this is tricky. And then it occurred to me, 20 minutes from now, I get to sit down right there, and it's done. So this is good. It's good. All right, so after that excitement, let's start with a little introspective moment, okay? I want to take you back a bit. As we kick off this conference, and as you are contemplating for a couple of days some amazing ideas, some inspirational talks, I want you to reflect on where it began for you. So your own kind of personal origin story. When you go back to your beginning in this industry, maybe what seeds were sown in your childhood, what kind of led you down this path? Perhaps it was the old chestnut, you know, I went to, I went to Walt Disney World when I was nine years old, you know, and never looked back. But for me, it was a little different. I wanted to be Indiana Jones. <laughs> I wanted to actually be my own hero in my own adventure. Right? I read the books, I watched the movies, I wanted to be James Bond. I wanted to be Gandalf the Wizard, the Count of Monte Cristo, an Apollo astronaut. <laughs> To borrow a line from Joe Garlington's excellent talk last year, B is greater than C. I wanted it to be real for me, to be physical, to be tangible, to be authentic, to be personal. So we all know here at the kickoff of this fantastic conference, we all know what SAIT stands for, right? Story plus architecture plus technology equals experience. I would like to suggest this morning that there's one thing missing in that mathematical equation. I mean, it's strongly implied, it's clearly there, but we're missing the you. And by you, I mean the guest, right? You know the age-old philosopher's question, if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody there to hear it, does it make a noise? Well, here is the official scientific answer. Who cares? If there's nobody there to hear it, who cares? If it's a great story, if it's an amazing space, incredible technology, is any, does any of that stand alone? No, it's only when viewed through the lens, through the eyes of our guests. So we'll do, do a little rearranging. If we add you, I would suggest that experience is stay. You want your guests to stay, I think we all do. You want your experiences to stay, to survive the test of time. We have to include you. All right. So for the next 30 hours or so, with a little sleep in between, you're going to see some amazing talks. You're going to see some really cool technology. You're going to see photos of incredible buildings, hear timeless stories. We love this stuff. This is why we're here, right? But my encouragement to you is this. As new ideas spring to mind, as inspiration strikes this week, right there in your chair, remember your guest. Adjust your focus towards the human focus. It's all about the guest. So, all right, I, let's get a little more practical here. I own a little company called Five Wits. We design and build walk-through adventures, among other projects. And for us, it's just about impossible to play test with our own team. Maybe, maybe you have that same problem with your office. See, it's, it's impossible, I think, to get a fresh 
perspective on a project that we've built because you can't unknow what you already know. When we hire a new employee at Five Wits, you know, it's their first day, maybe they haven't seen all our stuff yet, I generally pull them aside and have a little chat and say, look, you have an opportunity today. This is really, actually, truly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see this with fresh eyes, to go in and remember it for the first time, to remember the discovery and the magic, because you'll never get to see it for the first time again. And I think that is actually a big challenge for the people in this room today, myself very much included. Which, and it's, that's kind of counterintuitive, right? I mean, if you're here at SAIT, you must be the experts, right? We're, we're the experts, but we are also, I think, the jaded few, right? How many of you walk into the Magic Kingdom and actually have a good time? As opposed to my, my kids, we, boy, we went last year, Dad, why are they called me the knocker? Like, no, I gotta know if it's FRP or if it's Shotcrete. <laughs> like, it's like, and they, yeah. You're looking back over your head on the rides, you're trying to pick out the projector locations, you're calculating the interval on the roller coaster. What is the throughput here? Let's see, 40. <laughs> we don't see the park or a museum exhibit or a concert. We don't see the whole experience, right? By virtue of our training, we see the parts, we see the story and the architecture and the tech, but that's not quite like everybody else. Your guests experience the whole. So my encouragement to you today as we kick this conference off is to try to unknow what you know. It's to try to restore your virgin eyes for a couple of days and see the stories, the spaces, the gizmos, all the ideas you'll be introduced to in these next two days as your guest would see them. Okay, enough highfalutin talk. Let's get, let's change gears, let's get really practical. If it's all about the guest, then what does the guest want? So when Corey called me a few weeks back and asked me to speak, I immediately commissioned a survey, a survey of Five Wits guests at a couple of, in a couple of different states over a few weeks' time. It was a one-page survey with kind of all the usual questions, you know, did you like this place, would you tell a friend? But really the focus was on trying to pull out and at the risk of, of starting World War III here, I actually asked the guests, what do you think was most important today in your enjoyment of the experience? Story? Architecture? Tech? Yeah, <laughs> you, see, you know where this is going. Um, so to head off the comments that I will undoubtedly receive at lunch, this is not a scientific survey. I'm actually very conflicted about the results myself, but I think it's revealing of a few things. Number one, when people have a good time in an experience and you ask them why, they answer everything. They see the whole, they don't break it down, they're not good at telling you why, so there's not a lot of spread in this data. They can tell you if they enjoyed it, but in general folks have a hard time dissecting, right? They have a hard time figuring out their own internal motivations and preferences. So just as we are doomed to see the parts, they are inclined to see the whole. So take the data with a grain of salt, but here we go. Story, architecture, technology, added in a few more, did a few versions of the survey. How about activities, interactive elements, effects, AV, social elements, what's most important? Here's what we saw, grain of salt. So, unadulterated data, this is, this is what our guests are saying. Top of the pile is the set the site, and the games, the challenges, the interactive nature. Now this is heavily skewed by what Five Wits is, right? We're, we're an interactive place, so I think we're kind of have a biased audience in that regard. But the next step down then is the teamwork, the social elements of working together. And then all the wow moments, spectacle, the special effects, and pretty low on the totem pole was story. The only thing that actually did worse than story when we pulled it out in one version of the survey was AV because I think when people hear that and look at that specifically, you know, that's not sexy, that's not exciting. As a component, they want to see, they want to see how it fits into the whole. So, this surprised me, because I love the storytelling aspect, right? I'm a story guy. I bet most of the people in this room are used to the gospel message that it starts and ends with story. Story is, after all, it's the difference, right? It's the difference between an amusement park and a theme park. 
It's the difference between watching a musical on Broadway and just watching people at the airport. <laughs> Story is the difference between today's video games, which you can play for hundreds of hours, and <laughs> Pong. It's in fact, it's the difference between your favorite novel and the dictionary. The dictionary has all the same words, right? But the order of the words tends to matter. So I think there's some truth in this result that well-known brands, expensive IP notwithstanding, most people, most of our guests, are only dipping a finger into the story, even though we have staff who lives and breathes these details. I mean, they, our writers go over every event, making internal consistency. You know, the guests are just dipping a toe in the water. The story usually needs to take place. It, it, it provides the structure for the experience, but the experience has to take place within a different kind of structure. It takes place in a physical structure, and that's the architecture of the place. It's the stage on which we act. The props, the sets, the seats. Every experience actually happens somewhere, and some would argue, well, no, these days it doesn't have to happen somewhere. An experience can be entirely digital. We may even hear this perspective presented in the next two days here. But I would argue that in order for it to be compelling, even in a digital space, it needs to feel real, some version of real, close to real, and as such, you have to maintain the architecture in that digital world, in that digital space, just as you would have to in the physical world. So that, that kind of leads to the discussion of, of the technology, right? The, 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 the next bellwether term in SATE. In this one, I have a bone to pick. I will share this with you. So I had a museum client a couple of years back. Big project, lots of creative leeway. They had an internal team fly around for months and scour the marketplace and benchmark and report back. So look, okay, we have a conclusion. We want an exhibit that's authentic. We want convincing, we want real, we want the pinnacle of interactivity and personalization. We want high tech, we want sophisticated. So we have decided that what we need is touch screens. That, that was the group's conclusion. Man, I, I put my head on the table, I, I felt ill, and they, they asked me if I was sick during the meeting. I mean, this is sad, guys. This is pitiful if this is the state of our industry, if this is the best that we can do. Now, don't get me wrong, don't mistake me. I love movies, I love video games, this is great stuff, but when we have someone bodily in our spaces, I mean, we call this location-based entertainment for a reason. When someone is there, why in the world would we stick them in front of a screen? We have a screen at home, there's one on their living room walls, there's one on their desk, there's one in their car, there's one in their pocket. You know, how many of you today are within arm's reach of a screen? The answer is everybody. So I'm gonna make an argument for a moment that the glowing rectangles, the screens, are generally not the answer to our design challenges anymore. They are, we resort to them too frequently and it's really tough at this point to impress anybody with a glowing rectangle, although Jesse Schell will prove me wrong, I think, with his talk on virtual reality tomorrow, we'll see. Um, so I just wanted to walk you through one industry, a parallel industry, to give you an example of how I reached this thesis, right? So when I was a kid, who can relate with me here? When I was a kid, when we had Atari. Yay! <laughs> simple interface, one joystick, one button. This was awesome, games were simple. NES, anybody? Two buttons? Revolutionary, not one button, two buttons. Four buttons, six buttons. Lots and lots of buttons. That last one, I think, has 10 buttons if you count the ones underneath for your, for your index fingers. And now we've moved past that, right? Now gestural interfaces, now VR, even controlling things with our minds directly. I'm excited for Richard Hebert's talk tomorrow. We'll hear a little, little bit about that. So the next step, the holodeck is real, right? The only step after that, as far as I can tell, is plug in. So what, what is going on here? What, why does this happen? Well, game designers, not unlike the, us in this room, are trying to give players a more real experience. They're trying to increase the number of options, the number of choices at once. 
forget two, forget 10 buttons. We want more control, more options, more realism. But when I asked at the beginning of this talk, which experience, what dragged you into this industry, what your origin story was, were you remembering a screen? I think that guests actually want to be immersed in the fantasy, right? They want spectacle, they want amazing places and effects and rides, but not passively, not, you know, sp speaking for myself, I want to be Indiana Jones. I don't want to watch Indiana Jones. So getting the guest, getting the you involved in SATE involves giving the guest the opportunity to control the experience, to take an active role. I actually want my decisions to matter, right? My performance to matter, my actions to determine my fate. So at Five Wits, when we can't actually give the guest full control of an experience, we talk about the illusion of control, where they think they're on an open path. We come as close to that as we can for them to make the decisions. On a high level, I think the solution to this problem has been with us for a long time. It's, it's personal play, right? The guest wants to be the hero, and the way to get there is with personal play. Two words. So this is an active, participatory, hands-on, minds-on, small group, my decisions actually matter type of play. It's about play versus opposed to a passive observational type of entertainment, right? And again, an analogy of video games versus movies. A video game is like the play version of a movie, right? Instead of passively watching, you get to get actively involved, play the role, get inside the experience, even if only digitally. People say Five Wits is the physical version of a video game. And at this point, the CGI, certainly in movies, is to the point where you can't tell what has been generated by a computer and, and what's a live shot. I think not far off, video games will be at that same level. But we in this room, you know, until the point where they're plugging into the back of our heads, we have real spaces. We have people where we can work with them in real time, in real space. So my encouragement is, in the same way that a video game is the real version of a movie, we should be looking toward concepts that are the real play version of a theme park. That is, taking the same elements, but letting the guests control them, letting the guests get inside them, so they're directly influencing the experience, not passively observing, right? So when you ride in the top-notch 4D simulator ride, and you're bumping around and there's great content on screen and something wet happens and you get misted with water, right? You know that you love the gag and it's great, it's very entertaining. But if there are no guests in those seats, if there's no guests in that ride and you press go, what happens? Exactly the same thing, except the seat gets wet. The ride doesn't care if there's anybody there or not and that is a missed opportunity. Some of these, some of the games have added elements, right? Like the blasters, this the Nintendo gun here. The, the, the rides where you ride through the dark ride and shoot, adding a game element on it. That, the Nintendo gun too, this was revolutionary in its time. What's next? Where can, where can we step up to? Our guests want to get in the game. They want to be the hero. Technology is Technology is increasingly enabling this, but I still get upset every time I see a commercial video game advertising itself as being the hero, because this isn't exactly what I imagine being the hero looks like. <laughs> so at the base level, I think guests can start by watching, right? You can watch a movie. Then there's something guests can physically experience, like a ride where they're moving. Still a passive participant, but they're experiencing other scenes beyond sight and sound. They can feel then they step up to engaged thinking. This is, tends to be elements of gameplay. Beyond thinking, you get to socializing. You get to teamwork and aspects of interaction. Let the guests determine their own fate, success, failure, reward, payoff. They're earning it. Then you get to the illusion of control, where guests think they have a choice. And finally, if you can do it, the ultimate, of course, is actually giving guests control. All right. So how do we actually get there? How do we get a theme park or a museum exhibit to that level? I have a few suggestions. So one, interactive, interaction required. Two, thinking, challenging, making something that they have to mentally engage. Three, cooperating, requiring teamwork, 
making the group actually matter. So this, this typically means a gameplay type element and smaller attractions. So my time is growing short already, but let's look at just one of these. Let's look at smaller attractions, right? We can be disruptive. The people in this room can change the rules. That's why we're here. The rules say you've got to put 400 to 800 people an hour through to be a viable theme park attraction, right? Well, why? It's the economics based on the park attendance, the revenue models you've got to hit. But how about instead of building one $50 million attraction, you were to build 10 $5 million attractions, each of which could accommodate 60 people an hour. This is, this is the five wits model. Same revenue potential, a smaller, more personal experience, small group capable. So it has many advantages, right? You can scale it to any size park or infrastructure. You could have two units or 20. You get economies of scale in production rather than this R&D once for a $50 million thing. The R&D is on a million dollar scale and then you clone it. You have operational flexibility. Open as many as you need, vary by season. You have maintenance flexibility. One is broken, one has a problem. Your guests aren't disappointed. They don't even know you're down. And most importantly, you get your group size down from 300 people to 10. You can really make it personal. All right, so I, a lot of great attractions are doing this, but I see I'm out of time. I want to wrap up with one final thought. Um, so what would the ultimate experience be, the ultimate adventure for you? It's safe, curated, but feeling free, adventurous, personal, playful, even dangerous. So me, going back to Indiana Jones maybe, I have always wanted to rob a bank. Not for the money, for the fun of it. <laughs> Sadly, my parents instilled one too many morals, so I'm not gonna get that chance. I've never exercised that, or at least I wouldn't tell you about it as this is being taped. But for our next attraction together, you and me, how about we build a bank? Let's buy one that's gone out of business. Awesome, heavy duty, walk-in safe. We'll stock it with Monopoly money, tellers, paintball guns, guards, charge the low, low price of $10,000, and your team gets the goods. You get blueprints to the building, wiring diagrams, security, schedules of the guards, just like we had a man on the inside. And the attraction is, sometime in the next month, knock over the bank. Take a sneaky middle of the night approach or crash through the front doors of paintball guns blazing. It's an open world. You decide. I'm excited for the future of entertainment. We're going to see a lot in the next decade. I think we're actually going to see a lot in the next two days. So I'll end as I started. Enjoy the talks, be inspired, and look right through the amazing details and technologies to see how they, your guests, like you, can be focused on the guest. Thanks.